All right, I think we're live. I don't know if anybody's watching yet. Okay, we're live. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. We are uh, setting up the picks and bands phase for the first game of the Grand Finals Tournament. So sit tight for just a second while I get everybody all the players' stuff. And we'll hop right into game one. Um, okay, I'll do the last part in Game Ranger. Okay, so... Uh, Nid has banned Rohan... And Carlaber has banned Arad and Gondor. So now PM picks, please. Uh. Nid is saving the bands. Nid has only banned one faction for this first game. All right. And we have a pick for Nid. I'm going to make sure to wait until Carlebur picks. Okay. All right. Nid, MM, and Carlebur. Harad. There it is, folks. We're going to get Harad in the first game of these Grand Finals in 8.0. We're going to get the game started. All right. Perfect. Looks like we're all set up. We're bringing back the Mr. Bones Spooktacular Cup uh, special map. Stands before you, bones are rattling, skull a clattering, spine a shivering, ribs a rustling, and pelvis a thrusting. Here we go. Right into game one, everybody. Hope you guys are excited. Let's do this. Yeah, I don't have chat up. Uh, if Duna Dan or anybody else is there. My Streamlabs is not showing chat, so if anybody has anything to say, I'll have to check it out after this match and see what, uh, what I can do to get that going. Mr. Bones, spectacular. I bid thee welcome. <laughs> spooky, spooky, spooky. All right. Here we go. In the top left, the first introduction of this grand finals tournament. 
You guys have seen both of these guys play some pretty crazy games so far. Uh, in the top left, we have Karlaber playing Haradwaith. Starting out with two bazaars and going into an outpost. And in the bottom right of Spooky Eisen, we have two tunnels and a goblin cave going down for Nidhogger. Two great players. This is going to be a great match. It looks like Nid is going to start with some goblins instead of anything super cheeky. I don't even think... I can't see a builder running across the map or anything, so pretty pretty normal start over here on this side of the map. And some pretty normal stuff over here. We've got the Southern Sentry uh, Tier 1 power already being slapped down. Pretty short cooldown for this, so the sooner he can get these spread around the perimeter of his map, he'll have full vision control of this side of the river. And his first warlord is going to summon the tribal spearmen, presumably to creep some wargs, pretty normal. And actually, we do see a, a Misty Mountains builder running across the map here. Let's see how far across the river he dares to go. He's going to poke his head into the corner over here, slap down a tunnel. And we can already see at least two battalions of Moria Orc Screechers hiding in the tunnels for Misty Mountains. As the Tribal Spearmen are going to take out the Warg Lair for some money. Pretty standard stuff. We're up to three bazaars, or four bazaars rather, counting as hard, for Haradwe. As far as I can tell, no other, um, no other units. Another Warlord is being purchased. And uh, we did see the beginnings of another tunnel over here. So uh, Nid going to try and get some all-around map control over here. While these tribal spearmen are going to try and offensively take these creeps. I kind of like this move knowing that Misty Mountains probably isn't going to have uh, pikes right away to be able to take those. Carlebur is going to definitely lose this bazaar here. Uh, crazy surround from three, maybe even four. Nope, just three battalions and one of them actually hitting level two. The Tribal Axemen are going to try and chase these guys down, and uh, we actually see a rush for the Carrion Feeders from Harad. That's kind of fun. Don't see that too often. The Pavilion of the Golden King in the back, I didn't even see it get uh, getting purchased. The um, These guards from the Pavilion are going to be a thorn in these goblin side, as the new Poison Blade effects over here are... Fighting this bazaar. I think the bazaar is still going to go down, but uh, the carrion feeder should be up pretty soon. So, um, pretty risky, uh, expensive strategy here coming from uh, coming from Carliber. He took a risk going for a more expensive uh, building, um, and he's going to pay for it in early losses in in structures. But he's going to rebuild those, no problem. And these, what they've got? Yeah, they've got to be level three by now. Uh, just trying to take every ward creep on the map as more goblins run across the uh, thing here. I want to see, if I'm on Harad, I am on Harad's vision, so the, the southern center here does not see the tunnel. Uh, lots of goblins coming up here, just pretty um, standard Misty Mountains harass. The giant scorpion hitting the field. I don't know... I'm wondering if we'll see a Mountain Orc Lodge for... Uh, Misty Mountains here in order to deal with the Scorpions. We don't have any pikes yet. And the Goblin Archers might be able to deal with the Carrion Feeders, but the, the Scorpion's going to do a little bit more damage here. We'll see what, what it's able to find. Carrion Feeder here, just kind of circling the base with the perimeter. I love the strategy that Carlaber is employing here with the Southern Sentries, keeping the uh, vision on this perimeter of the base. He's got fast-moving flyers able to kind of scout and defend... Um, you know, smaller attacks from, from goblins here. I'm assuming we'll see it fly over in this direction pretty soon. Uh, some more Axemen. Not going to go defend this yet. I wonder if he's seen it yet. Uh, over here, we see the Scorpion uh, seems to have gotten a tunnel over here. And is outrunning these goblins. Gonna try and get a trample on these, but I think with too, too many of these all attacking it at once with Poison Blades. The splash damage is crazy, it hits level 2. 
And it's going to take a lot of goblins out with it before it falls. I like to see that interaction. Pretty interesting. Over here we've got Carrion Feeders and Harondor Raiders. Going to be trying to deal with as many goblin creatures as they can. Lots of stuff. I've got to get my mouse moving a lot quicker. These guys are doing stuff a mile a minute. So we've got the Treasure Trove over here. Under attack by a small band of, of Axemen. Um, to defend is a whole slew of stuff in the, in the tunnels, of course. But we'll see how many he wants to devote to this defense. They're not even attacking yet, so I, I don't think Carliber is going to be able to take this uh, highly armored structure down here. Um, Nid putting auto cast on the on the archers for poison arrows. Good call, just to make sure he's getting that extra DPS. Uh, while a large um, army of goblins though comes to defend this one battalion, we've got Harondo raiders jumping on top of this uh, rather empty tunnel. Uh, and still no pikes yet, as far as I can tell, no mountain orc lodge, but we do have the troll cave, and we're, I'm, uh, starting to build some, uh, cave trolls. Tribal Axemen gonna take down this, uh, tunnel. This tunnel must have fallen a long time ago as well. We've got two battalions of goblins gonna try and take down this, uh, bazaar once again, the one that had already been destroyed. Still a level one pavilion. We obviously must be at least at a level two outpost if we're seeing the Harondor Raiders out on the map. Um... Archers here able to clean up this unit, but not able to defend the tunnel before it falls. And not able to defend this tunnel either, but the troll is going to scare off the Harondo Raiders, leaving the uh, rebuildable uh, rubble there. Carrion feeders plus axemen are going to try and stop this attack, but not before the bazaar falls. So Nid is quite happy with this trade here. And now we're at a kind of a standstill, so let's take a little bit of a of a map kind of gauge here. We've got 444 out of 500 for Nid, as he's kind of solidified himself on this side of the map. Whereas Harad, um, sitting at a similar max CP, but a much lower army size. Uh, a couple of Harondor Raiders going to kind of tickle this tunnel. And along with a carrion feeder and these axemen, I don't know if there's enough in here to actually defend this one. So Nid is probably going to have to let this one fall. And it's giving Harad quite a bit of a PowerPoint lead, taking down all these buildings. Um, that probably makes up for the losses in his army. A uh, huge goblin kill there, but with the poison arrows from two aggressive stance uh, Moria orc archers, the carrion feeder is going to fall almost immediately. Um, the access to flyers from level 1 building is pretty strong, but... Uh, they are pretty fragile when it comes to fighting off the the archers here. So it looks like we're gonna see. I was wondering if this was gonna be accompanied by a, a black Numenorian or the Umbarian Citadel. So Casimir hitting the field. Um, many goblins trying to skirt across the edge of the map here, uh, with not much to defend. We still only have a hundred army supply from Harad, uh, and unless he's able to get on top of these Moria Arc archers, the Carrion Feeder is not gonna last long. Uh, he is going to send it back in. But the archer's not able to get uh, stand still long enough to get the attack on him. Another attack from the south here with a melee uh, tree troll. And now these poison arrows are starting to hit this carrion feeder. But the carrion feeder now at monsters recover... Oh, that's healing out of combat. I think there is a lifesteal one. Or maybe that's just the giant bats. So, decent uh, defense here from Harad, but the Carrion Feeder is going to retreat, or going to uh, fall, and Harad is also pushing off these smaller battalion of Moria Orcs here. <laughs> this bazaar was never meant to live here. Uh, this troll going to take it down, and Casimir going to get a nice bit of experience taking down that troll. Mano a mano. Let's just check in really quick with Cargast. Raiders. The level 2 Raiders, I don't know what they got level 2 off of, must have been a couple of uh, tramples, but you don't want to lose the level 2 ones now that you've got them level 2. I think they're, yeah, that's a shame there from Carliber. I, I wonder if he had noticed if they were level 2 that he would have sent them back home in order to replenish, but um, getting a little bit of trample on these archers, uh, hopefully enough to get these uh, axemen on top of the tunnel for him, but I think uh, Nid is going to be able to counter with a large enough force. Uh, an interesting uh, flank here from these raiders running straight into the troll. Really unfortunate angle. Uh, the troll going to be able to hop on these guys, start punching them around. And they're just not able to get up to enough of an acceleration speed to get the trample to get through these guys. Um, getting dragged down by all these goblins. 
uh, Harad able to take the tunnel down. If they're going to be able to get the rubble down, I'm not entirely sure. But a lot of a lot of effort here from Harad for not a lot of gain. I mean, Nid is happy to lose some uh, goblins here and there. And he wasn't able to get the lasting damage of the tunnel down. I guess, you know, Nid is short some income for a little while until that rebuilds for free. But uh, we do see fire arrows being purchased from Nid. So going to hope that this uh, elemental damage is going to keep him in the fight a little bit, especially with the threat of the carrion feeders at least having been present before. We're sticking to a level 1 pavilion, so we haven't moved into the Karad Patriarch or um, Beastmaster territory. Large push here from Nid. It is not unseen by Karlaber, as he's got his southern sentries watching everything. Uh, Casimir going for a little bit of a, a survey? I don't really know. I don't know what his plan here is. He's going to kill a couple of goblins. Um, Nid is going to try and trap him with the men of the... Well, wait a minute. Oh, no, no, no. That's his power, obviously. Okay, so he's getting vision and summoning the Easterlings here while Nid is attacking. That's really smart. Of course, I didn't know what was going on because I'm not very good at this game. <laughs> um, but that's all to... Tr oh, the... the um, the snipes on the warlords making quick work of these tribal warriors and the mountain orc brutes getting on top of this scorpion. If the scorpion's able to get enough splash on top of these pikes, he might be able to defend this long enough, but the fire arrow siege coming from Nid is... What a what a power play. We've still got the summon and, and Casimir trying to do stuff. I think Casimir returned to try and defend this. Um... Uh, Casimir's getting a little stuck up here, but the fact that this thing is still alive, if he's able to get on top of these archers, that would be crazy, but the, the Black Numenorean Cav coming in with not enough acceleration to prevent the defeat of the level 3 Bazaar, and the level 3 Bazaar goes down. What a crazy attack by Nid. Really, really, really well played by both players. I mean, I love to see the the Casimir getting vision to get the summon to try and get any sort of counter damage done. But I think, I think he underestimated how much damage the fire arrow orcs plus the troll was going to get siege wise. He's lost a level two barracks um, that was forming most of his army, which is also part of the problem. He was only having tribal uh, units up until the uh, Black Numenorean Vanguard came out. So he's going to try and use this time uh, after the attack was thwarted to get some damage done to some tunnels. Uh, but some Mountain Orc Brutes are now in the tunnel system. And it'll be up to Carliber to get these guys out of dodge here. Looks like he'll be fine if he doesn't run. Oh, he runs Casimir right through him. Tragic. He, uh, he couldn't afford that. He can't afford that. He's only got 500 resources. He doesn't even have a, an outpost being rebuilt as far as I can tell. Oh, man. This is crazy. So, Nid, I mean... So, Nid has Tom Burton Bill ready to go. Not a ton of money, but quite a bit of max CP and map, map control. Um, and he's working on rebuilding this army here. If he can capitalize on this weakness from Harad, he should be able to take the game pretty soon. I wonder if he really knows how weak Carliber is at the moment. I mean, these Black Numenorean Vanguard are hard to deal with as they're running around killing these extra tunnels. But they got a cheeky kill on Casimir earlier. These guys are a pretty low battalion now, not as dangerous as they were. A few more Fire Arrow Battalions going to try and take down these bazaars, prevent Carliber from coming back. I mean, I don't know... I've been trying to watch uh, Harad's money. He's saving up for something here, but he, he doesn't have... A barracks to be spending uh, regular money on. So the Black Numenorean uh, Vanguard is still... If he wants to get out of range of the Static D, that would probably be good. But Nid is just all over the place. If the, um uh, if the Umbarian Citadel goes down while Tom Burton Bill are here, I think that's going to be a pretty decisive game from Nid. Yeah, it's level 3, and he doesn't have Barodapan, so he cannot get the Watchers of Karna. I think that's it. If that goes down, I, I really do think that's it. He's going to try and rebuild the Citadel, but he just he doesn't have the economy left to be working off... I mean, what Corsairs of Umbar is all he can get until that's been upgraded. He needs units now, and I think the loss of the level 2 uh, outpost was too much. I mean, maybe he's seen something I don't, but... 
There's too much here from Nid. Unrelenting Sun is going to try and deal some damage, slow these guys. I love the effects on this. I didn't even recognize it at first. Misty Mountain's getting us around on the on the Southern Sentry here, and it's really... It's everything Carla Burr can do to try and get a foothold to get some resources back again. I mean, these... Black Numenori and Vanguard are, are elite tier units. Definitely a big help. But, like, even just a couple of fire arrows... Alright, he's able to save... Well, there's a few left. Carla Burr, no! Carla Burr! Oh. Nope. The devoted guardians of the pavilion protecting that long enough. But this bazaar isn't going to last long. This bazaar isn't going to last long. We can only be purchasing Corsairs of Umbar right now. The head of the one who and uh, Casimir back with a vengeance, but uh, pretty lonely. Let's see. Yeah, we're at 1,000 max CP. So, you know, at least for me as a lesser player, when I have an if I ever find myself to have an advantage like Nid has, I would forget to spread and keep up. But Nid is keeping up his economy, his macro, and keeping the pressure on... Because uh, at this tier of play, comebacks from players like Carlibur and stuff are, are almost expected. So he's making sure to not give him any ro uh, room to breathe. Uh, Muzgash seems to be in trouble if he didn't die already. I don't know where that was. But it did seem like Muzgash was in the mix. Black Numenorean Vanguard finding a really decent uh, trample here. But they are going to get met with, um, if the troll can get any kind of CC on these guys. Nope, oh, they're able to, a few of them fall, but I think, yep, they're going to survive. No problem there for the Black Numenorean Vanguard. I mean, this is going to be it. It's got to be. I don't see what else is in the cards here for, uh, for Haradwaith. Let's see, we're at 300 max CP. That's, that's two bazaars, I think. It has to be, mathematically. He's building a third. Or at least this is a higher level. No. The Black Numenorean Vanguard trying to buy as much time as possible. Trying to find those tramples from around uh, where the Brutes are located in the clumps here. Uh, dodging the troll rocks. But if, yeah, if Nid does what he needs to do here, he's got so many fire arrow uh, battalions here protected by these Brutes can't protect the unit buildings the fourth men of darkness is going to be pretty effective against these cave trolls here but i think a, uh he finally bites the bullet here and tries to get a, a trample in here but he doesn't have enough acceleration to take the fire arrows down and i think he might have held off long enough i mean without both of those trolls and without the as many fire arrows as he had before he's alive for now but this is <laughs> the numbers speak for themselves here. Watcher in the water is ready for Nid at this time. Uh, a 10 power point is available. I think with Southern Sentry, though, I don't know what else he's he has left to buy. <laughs> this is uh, just facing this other bazaar. I'm assuming that's going to go down. Yeah, Casimir gets caught. And that's going to be it. GG is called from Carlaber. Game one is finished. Excellent stuff. Very nice. All right, let me save this replay really quick here. Not that I did this last time. I can't post these because it's the beta version. But <laughs> Carlaber versus Nid G1. All right. I'm going to update the scoreboard as soon as I can. You can pick the next map. And I want to see what's going on in chat so I can hang out with you guys for a little bit while we're doing this piece of things. Go to the hold screen and I'll update the score as well.
All right, there we are. We're on. Uh... <laughs> Come on, God. Carliver with the fortress alone. It's, but it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> yeah, it was that. It was that attack in the mid game that Nid had, where he just. I mean. I would not have expected like a full on siege, but he just ran across the map with like three fire arrows and a troll and like just destroyed his whole base. It was crazy. <laughs> um, I got to update the score. I keep saying I will. <clears throat> All right. Nid is up to one. All right, that should be updated for you guys, if you can see that. All right, I have Carla Burr's bands. Just waiting on nids. Spooky background, hell yeah. Thank you, Syrupy Strawberry. Appreciate that. Yeah, Nerevar, the pike maneuvering from Nid was crazy. I mean, the Black Numenorean Vanguard are no joke, but um, Nid had like three or four battalions of brutes just protecting his apparently now siege units, fire arrow, <laughs> Moria orc archers. <clears throat> okay, we have bands from Nid as well. All right, I got to communicate that to the players really fast. I like this matchup. You guys know I love a lore matchup. Any guesses to what it is before I reveal? Yeah, my stream is gone, so I can't see what you guys are saying, but we do have a Rohan versus, an I versus Isengard matchup this time around, which I'm excited to see. Okay, we're all set with the rules. <clears throat> all right, and we're into game two. We'll hit the loading screen here. All right, here we are, Holland. I guess I could have done spooky Holland as well. That is uh, an unfortunate mistake on my part. But here we are on Holland in the top left. We have Carliber currently down 0-1 in this tournament, but he is our reigning uh, official AOTR champion from the Muzgash Summer Bash, Summer Smash. And we see two farms going down for Rohan, and I'll want to check back in to see if we're going into peasants or something else. But 
In the bottom right, we do have Isengard. Currently up 1-0 in this tournament. Nidhogger. A couple of furnaces in the back. Going for a third. Going for even a fourth. He doesn't seem to expect any... Um, he doesn't seem to expect any early aggression here. No peasants coming across the map this way. So, Nid... Um, Nid knows that Carliber banned, or no, he banned Rohan for Carliber last game and figured that he would want to play it this game. That's my bet. So I think this Isengard pick was uh, in order to counter anything that's going on here for Rohan. And I love this from Nid. How fun is that? So Nid goes for a pretty greedy start, right? He goes four furnaces and then he buys uh, Vision of the Palantir so that he can make sure he's not going up against any uh, trickery. Here, so it's going to be a stable start. Not enough money from Rohan just yet. There it is. Just got enough for the Horseman of the Mark. But um, Carliber should know that Nid will be prepared for this in some capacity. He saw the effects go down for Vision of the Palantir. I don't often see the Vision powers going into play as much um, in these tournaments. So it's really cool to kind of see the mind games that these two players are, are using against each other here. The Wildman Spearman gonna run over and try and take this War Glare as quickly as possible. Get the signal fire. Now, actually, uh, Kamogon or, or you know somebody else uh, in the chat confirm for everybody: Do signal fires still do the spell reduction, or is it just vision now? I feel like I remember a change like that, but I can't quite remember. Another batch of Wildman Spearmen coming just in time to prevent uh, the Horsemen of the Mark. God, this is straight out of the movie, guys. How cool is this? We've got the Riders of Rohan going up against the War Riders that are being howl that are howling. Who wins this fight here? I mean, with Wildman Spearmen around like this. Ooh, wow. They actually took huge losses there. I think it was a bit of a pathing thing. They were shuffling around more than they were attacking. Might have been a bit of a lag issue. <clears throat> a lag issue there from Nid. Um, unfortunate kind of running into the wargs here while trying to run away from Rohan. Might have given the peasants a free uh, warg lair because he needs to send these guys back to defend. Lots and lots of action happening in the middle of the map here. Um, trying to check tech before we do anything too crazy. It's just a barracks uh, and stables from Rohan. And a warg pit. And level 1 clan studying from Isengard here. More of a chess match than anything else. Not too many head-on confrontations yet. We've got the Rohan Spearman on defensive stance. Horseman of the Mark kind of getting shaved off the side here. A little bit of a pathing error from Carliber there. He's going to lose a few horses. Um, Wildman Spearman getting no damage done on this farm. The peasants getting their speed boosts. Is it speed or armor or both from uh, a nearby farm? I wonder where the what effect it's, where it says that effect. I'm not entirely sure. A few more wild men running across. Peasants not even going to try and chase. They're a bit too slow. We also see that, um, okay, he just purchased Rebuild. I think he was waiting to see whether he needed Draft or um, wanted the Shore Up thing. Uh, these Wild Men at level 2 are actually going to be benefiting from the Pillage. Not going to be enough damage to kill it, though. Over here we have some Peasants and Wargs uh, successfully staving off a Rohan attack. Wargs are going to try and get the trample on these peasants here, but the spearmen are going to be able to reposition just in time, not for the kill, but at least to defend. And there's a there's a battle over here for the signal fire. It looks like these wild men were able to capture it just in time. So Nid currently owns both signal fires. Vision control for Isengard is going to be massive. It's going to be tough for, especially in this kind of chess match that they're doing, running these units around each other. Nid is going to have much more information than Carliber has, so keep that in mind. Uh, Rohan's going to try and even the odds, though. Take the one on his side of the map as these Rohan spearmen chase down these. And Isengard is able to uh, clear out the enemy from this part of the map here, too.
All right, Isengard's numbers seem pretty big at this point. We must fight for the ones we love. Eowyn, we can see, or hear, rather, is being purchased. There's just a lot of pressure coming in from Isengard, and I don't know what Rohan has an answer to this. I think this this feels very calculated from Nid. If I was getting the vibe that he expected Carlebur to play some Rohan, and this feels like a very prepared response to what... Uh, um, to what Carlebro was going to play. So really, really cool, like, mind games and, and, and preparation here from Nid. But, I mean, we'll see what, we'll see what Carlebro can make of it. Eowyn and the peasants um, around the farm are going to be able to get uh, as many bonuses as they can. A little skirmish in the center with the cavalry. Uh, I don't think this farm is going to be able to be saved, and these uh, wild men are going to level up here because of this. And... Eowyn leveling up relatively slowly against the uh, the spam classified units here. Peasant's going to be able to defend this windmill. All in all, just a farm. Not a, not too bad, and uh, Carlibur is now going to take this opportunity to try and run across the map and see what's left to find here. He's catching these guys at a good uh, at a good time. He might be able to fight both of these and contest the war glare while Sharku. Again, more movie stuff, man. This makes my Lord of the Rings heart happy. Um, Sharku and his band of wargs running across the fields, ravaging the windmills and the peasants of Rohan. An armory is going to be put down near the warg lair here, right in front of these spearmen. Uh, maybe it was to save the builder? An expensive builder save. Uh, the builder is definitely dead. Um, Rohan is going to take now the second, uh, signal fire. Sharku and his band of wargs all howling. We've got, um, we don't have the rank four, uh, health and armor, uh, buff from Sharku just yet. Just the, uh, damage and experience and armor boost, which is not nothing. But we're running into the fortress a bit here. Losing some wargs. We don't quite have level two. If he can get these guys before they kill the farm and get level 2, that'd be great. Over here we see um, the armor from the armory is a bit high. Uh, Nid might be able to defend this long enough. We've got uh, Eowyn leading the charge here with a couple of peasants and spearmen, while Nid is running many, many wildman battalions across the map. I mean, Nid must have a large army here. Uh, Shark who's struggling. And we do see Theodred hitting the map as well. That's pretty cool. Horseman of the Mark getting trapped here in the defense. Just as this farm hits level 2, it's going to be lost. Uh, Theodred has to be careful running around uh, near all these pikes. I think they're going to be able to keep this farm alive. And this farm, just barely. Is Shore Up available? Shore Up is almost available. We'll see if he wants to save it or... I mean, this is... I would almost delete this and rebuild it. So the Wildman trying to stealth near the trees, not quite working uh, very well. And and Carlebur with very good control on the pikes. Um, or rather on the horses to avoid the pikes here. I want to see what's happening up here. We find some Uruk scouts and Wildmen uh, here to defend against these. But I think it's going to be too much. Yeah, Nid is going to say, I need to retreat here. Take this signal fire. Take this signal fire. Battle of the signal fires here. Um, and Rohan kind of reset a little bit. Theodred is still alive. At level 2, um, he doesn't have any of his uh, special abilities or leaderships. At level 3, um, he'll gain some armor. Theodred and crew going to run and try and take down this armory with max health. It'll take a little while, but a decent enough distraction. Eowyn, instead of cutting too far deep into Isengard's base, is going to try and clear these guys out. Maybe try and retake the signal fire, but Nid is not having it. Nid is taking the scouts down and hunting down these heroes. Um, or rather, he's taking down the units first as the Oath of Kyrian goes. This is fun. We've got Hirgon. I think this is his first... Um, uh, his first uh, appearance in uh, an official tournament, for sure. Uh, Hirgon is the a hero associated with the Oath of um, Oath of Kyrion summon. Hirgon being the deliverer of the of the Red Arrow in the Two Towers in the books. Ooh, poor, poor, um, 
Poor warg management here gonna die to these uh, spearmen of Minas Tirith. Uh, Sharku gonna use his summon to try and take these guys down, take them off of the clan setting, and more Uruk scouts getting summoned here. Sharku is now level four, and has and um, that was what the send in the wargs was for. All right, Theodred gonna dismount in order to take on these spearmen. I like that, making the he doesn't have to run away. He can take on one battalion no problem. Uh, Eowyn uh, or Durnhelm rather now at level five. Level 5 has Maneater. Gonna use that to restore some health and uh, disappear here. I love to see... This is... I feel like we're seeing such new... Um, not new stuff. I mean, everybody knows Sharku, but it's just fun to see some of these uh, different strats played uh, on such a high level. Uh, Theodred has now remounted his horse, getting a big EXP spike here from killing that furnace. Um, and Durnhelm gonna dismount as well to take care of the rest of these uh, spearmen. Uh, large Uruk and Wildmen battalion coming across the map as uh, Sharku trying to find some harass on this farm, but is actually going to find some Horsemen of the Mark having an awkward conversation with a cave troll. Um, a bit too much Isengard here, but I think a decent trample from Horsemen of the Mark is actually keeping Nid in a position for a bit longer than he would have expected. His, uh, his Uruk scout archers are getting exposed to the peasants, so he's actually losing quite a bit here. A really, really, really good engage here from Rohan, getting a lot of value from a from a far inferior army. Uh, Eowyn coming in from the flank, not getting a ton of XP from killing all these wildmen, but is definitely keeping them busy. Uh, as Nid is kind of forced into a bit of a retreat here and is going to be have to settle for this farm kill. Uh, Sharku getting surrounded by... Oh man, nice splash damage hit there, hitting level 7 for Sharku. No pikes in here to deal with Sharku. Uh, on the bottom here, we see uh, Theodred dismounted, not wanting to get caught by the Uruk pikes. I want to check everybody's tech in a second. Um, Eowyn still defending the windmill, uh, but being joined by her uh, beloved cousin here. Um, Sharku is just mopping things up up here. So even though the peasants might be able to take care of the battalions, uh, Sharku is going to be able to, yep, clean all this up. We are the fighting Urukai. We hear build me an army being summoned. Uh, I want to know where he put it. Did he put it forward or back in base? So he's got it back in base. Build me an army in this version of the of the game. Uh, you can toggle which uh, battalion of Uruks you're trying to summon here. Um, so in the back, yeah. I mean, let's see really quick. Uh, take a break from the action for just a second. We've got uh, clan settings, but we have two Uruk pits. One is level two, uh, not level three. So Urukai Manslayer is not on the docket here. But with Build Me an Army, uh, lots of options here available to Nid as he moves across the map. And he does own this forward signal fire and has just recaptured that one. But we are seeing the Edoras Kingsguard coming out. So Rohan is kind of moving into the final phase of their... Uh, army makeup too. We have the Warriors of Helmingus. So between Theodred, Durnhelm, and these elite tier units, these uh, these Wildman Spearmen and Uruk Scout Battalions are going to have to get their value in these kind of flank attacks like this. But the Edoras Kingsguard going to challenge them and can probably win this fight straight up. They're providing the defensive bonus to the farm. I love this pick here from Carliber. Up in the top right, we've got Sharku trying to pull some shenanigans with some pikes. Kind of an interesting strategy here. But the Horsemen of... No, the Rohirrim. These are not Horsemen of the Mark. I hope I haven't been calling them that this whole time. But um, they are going to struggle against these Uruk... Or the Wildman Spearmen up there. Yeah, these guys in this formation are absolutely crushing it. Just kind of unkillable juggernauts here. We do have an attack over here. Theodred just barely... I, man, I'm missing a lot of action here. I hope you guys can forgive me here. The Warriors of Helmingus do get cleaned up by a Berserker. And these um, Edoras Kingsguard are going to get grabbed as the Boar of Everholt is going to try and take like an exit trade here. Um, I think Carlebert took uh, too many losses over on this side than he was expecting. He did get to keep, as far as I can tell, Theodred alive. Both of the heroes lived. 
Um, but a lot of his expensive infantry, including the Helmingus, were killed. Um, and the Boar of Everholt still kind of wreaking havoc over here. I don't know if it's translated into too many permanent losses for Isengard, but it is definitely delaying any sort of counterattack. Because at this point, 250 uh, current army supply to 630 is a pretty wild difference. The only thing going for Carlebur at the moment is that it's on this side of the map, at least for now. Ooh, somebody's going down. I don't know who that is. It's Sharku? Oh, they did catch Sharku. Is this, uh, yeah, it's Theodred. Prince of the Rittermark. Very cool. Big, uh, damage buff from Theodred being provided at this time. Not his level, he's past level 5. Rook Scouts trying to get some damage onto these Edoras Kingsguard. As tanky as they are. Oh! Ooh, Dernhelm kind of almost about to rush straight into some Wildman Spearmen. Uh, not quite what you want. And Nid is taking back this signal fire. It doesn't seem like there's anything Carliber can do for it at the moment. Edoras Kingsguard taking on the Uruk Pikemen in defensive stance here. They should be able to win this fight. It'll just take a while. Fight in the center here. Lots of uh, boons and buffs from Rohan. Vision of the Palantir trying to give its units a speed bonus. Lots of Uruk scouts that are buffed right now, providing uh, DPS. Oath of Eorl, or Oath of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Oath of Kirion summoned in the back. I'm gonna need to take a quick uh, drink of water soon. Lurt's being killed. This is a great, great summon here from Rohan. Hirgon, Durnhelm, and Theodred all uh, taking down Lurt's and his attack, but with um. A really nice establishment up on the top here with an armory and the warg pit and I'm wondering, yeah, sentry tower. He does not want any side attacks coming up from the top. Two more pikemen coming in to see what farms they can get a get a kill on while he's trying to use the remaining uh, the remainder of this Oath of Kyrian summon to get some uh, economic damage done. Saruman has hit the field. Uh, Wizard blast available. I don't know if he's going to use it on the... If he uses it here, that would probably be a mistake. Yeah, yeah, okay, he's going to wait. The timer on these guys is almost done, and I don't even know if you'd get experience for killing the summoned units. Uh, Theodred trying to see what's going on over here, but it's not quite what he was hoping to see. Uh, Kingsguard trying to buff the damage here. I mean, shore up, not available. So the Uruk Pikemen getting the job done and are going to try and retreat. Theodred with huge damage, able to take on the armory by himself. I did not expect that at all. Uh, if he runs right into these pikemen, though, oh no! Damn. Huge, huge loss for Rohan here. That's how it started in last game, too. When Carliber lost Casimir last game, it was kind of a turning point. And I think this is a pretty scary army for uh, Rohan to have to deal with at the time. He's got a level 3 Ugluk, uh, level 1 Saruman. The economy for Nid is just absolutely massive. We've got lumber mills in the back. Very calculated strategy here from Nid. Uh, we've got Grimbold actually going to be able to kill a furnace now that uh, when Theodred died. Not bad here, but the um, the death stroke here is coming from is coming from Isengard with not much to match uh, in terms of power points. We're a good fourteen away from uh, from the Stormcrow power. Kingsguard even having trouble dealing with these level 2 pikemen in, in defensive stance here. Ah, these guys are hitting level 2 now, though. It's going to be easy enough. Royal Isengard still posturing. Two huge flanks here. And Carliber going to have to decide how he's going to deal with this. We've got the mounted Kingsguard now. Always banking on that elite cav is Carl Carliber. Dernhelm and two battalions of Kingsguard here should be able to deal with this. And actually, a bit of a, a bit of a misstep I, hear, I think here from Nid. He didn't want to commit without siege. Uh, and so now he's kind of losing the value that this flank had. And so Carliber actually finding a pretty decent opening in um, in Nid's offense here to, uh, to deal with this threat. If he overextends, though, and tries to get too much value... Yeah, okay, so he's going to fall back. He, he knows that this exists and can't let this... Um, let this fester for too long. I'm sure Lurtz is back. Yep, there he is. 
We've got Lurts providing. What does he provide at level 2? Yeah, he's got the full 33% damage and armor. Uh, this is going to be really, really tough for Rohan to deal with. 800 army size from Nid. And while he does have some elite units and Dernhelm here, he hasn't been able to repurchase Theodred as far as I can tell. Or if he has it, he's not arrived yet. Um, trying to take a poke? I mean... This is going to go poorly. Wizard Blast is going to get huge value on these guys. Oh, they're able to survive the Wizard Blast. That, that does a pretty good job of denying some XP to Saruman, but these units are going to fall very quickly to the buffed up Uruk Scouts here. Uh, Worm Tongue here going to be able to deal with Dernhelm, and yet that's it. Seeing that army was too much for Carliber, he's not going to be able to deal with it and calls GG right there. Whew. All right, need a quick drink of water. I'm going to save this game here. We've got Carliber versus Nid. Game two. All right. Is this all you can conjure, Saruman? I think it was enough. I think it was a good amount from <laughs> from Isengard there. Um, all right, let me change the score, and then I need to give my voice a little break while I edit this stuff. All right, we're in the we're in the completion zone here. Nid is up 2-0 in a best of five. So if Nid can take the next game, Carlebur is going to have to step it up in this next one. <clears throat> there we go, Nid 2-0. Lorien versus Mordor, huh? That would be a fun one to see. That's a lot of new stuff. <laughs> Mordor versus Lorien, actually? All right, I have bans from Nid. Hmm. Okay. It's not going to be Mordor versus Lorien, that's for sure. Carla Bird just banned both for Nid. All right. One sec. I don't think we're getting a cool map. I mean, Eric is nice, but... <laughs> Looks like we're sticking with the normals. Beta casting, though. Beta casting. We'll, we'll get it, guys. No worries.
All right, I think our picks are in. I just need to confirm, and then we'll we'll load up the game here in just a sec. Uh, okay, going live. <clears throat> so, Gondor versus Lothlorien. I'm curious to see how this is going to go. It's an interesting matchup. It's quite different from the lore matchup from, <laughs> from the prior match. Mid's not quite in the room yet. There he is. <clears throat> All right. VLFH, FH, HF. Here we go. All right. For those just tuning in, or who need a refresher. Nid is up two in a best of five. Um, 2 0. So this match wins it for Nid if he can pull out the Gondor victory. Um, versus Carliber, the reigning champ. We're here on Erech for map three of the spooky Mr. Bones tournament. In the bottom right, Nidhogger. As I just said, up 2 0, playing Gondor. Going for a couple of farms. And in the top left, we do have Lothlorien in all her new glory, being played by Carliber. So a new mechanic to be aware of um, since we've last showcased, well, showcased Lothlorien is that um, buildings like the barracks um, and the green pasture can accumulate resources over time for their level up instead of having to purchase the barracks level up. Uh, you can do both, obviously, but um, you now have another option afforded to you. So if you can, uh, you know, at the risk of putting your barracks out a little bit farther to get more resources, you have the possibility of upgrading your structure for free. So we're experimenting with that right now. There's quite a, other, quite a few other Lothlorian changes that have been happening recently, just since it's one of the newer ones. Um... And we'll get to them as be, as they become re relevant. But we have a Lorelinde running over here to build another Malorn tree. And we have the forward barracks here trying to uh, establish that kind of thing. You can see as the resources tick, the XP bar grows. Lots and lots of forward trees without any upgrades trying to uh, harness the kind of half resource production here. So creeping out the trees farther and farther. The nephredial blooms, you can see the, the blooms here for the ones closer to the fortress, but quite a few being purchased uh, for their mediocre uh, resource production here. And a green pasture being built in the back. Or was that a green pasture? No, just another garrison. Clansmen of Lamadon running around, seeing what they can find. Um, purchasing the nephredial bloom. To try and get the cheeky, uh, the cheeky heal, perhaps. I wonder if he'll cancel it. Nope, he is going to go through with the upgrade to try and get the the resources here. When uh, when a Malorn tree completes its upgrade, it becomes fully healed. So, um, if you can time it right, you can kind of waste some harassers' time here. But Nid not going to commit to anything, seeing that the defenses are in place here. I want to see what Nid's doing in the back. We've got uh, classic farms, barracks. Just pumping out Clansmen of Lamadon, and we'll see a stables as well. And units on all three columns of the map here. Swordsmen just trying to poke out and see what they can find. Running into the Lorian archers on aggressive stance. 
These guys are going to take some damage, but if they can get on top of these guys... Yep, nope, Carliver is going to retreat them. No problem. And uh, this uh, obstacle here providing a, a nice clumping opportunity for the Clansmen of Lambadon to really chop down the Galathrim garrison here. A significant investment being lost at the start. Captain's Horn being thrown, uh, countered by You Can Go No Further for a few more extra seconds of free damage. But the Pinneth Gillen Riders... Okay, a, a nice stutter step here from... Uh, oh, <laughs> no! The initial acceleration going to completely demolish that battalion. Over here, we've got these Clansmen of Lamadon escaping with uh, level 2 as well. Lorien having a tough time keeping their stuff on the map. I, I wonder if a little this aggressive expansion was a bit too much for him. We have the Starlit Lanterns here. Going to be able to stun any units that come too close. But Nid not even going to try it. Going to take some exit damage from the archers here. But Nid already kind of uh, taking control of this game from the start. 350 out of 450. Lorian's going to have to do what Lorian does best and turtle up and probably get some heroes out. We'll see. The Riders of Pinneth Gillen taking a while to decide what they want to attack here, but very unfortunately, <laughs> a few of them walking right onto these uh, spearmen here. A bit of lag. Everything seems fine. Bearmen of Lynn here. At your command. Bearmen of Lynn here. Uh, nice retreat into the pikes there. Good control from Carliber with the... Um, movement there to get the Riders of Pinneth Gillen out of the equation. Five separate battalions of Clansmen of Lamadon, along with the Linhir Spearmen. Nid just doing a crazy job in these past few games of just amassing these army sizes. Uh, getting the archers out of the way of the Clansmen. Um, Pike's not the ideal uh, front runner against these Clansmen of Lamadon. Uh, we haven't seen any of the Axe Elves, the Tawarwaith, uh, this game. Oh. Riders of the Knife here. What do we have down here? We've got... Uh, oh, here are the Axe Elves. Destroying some farms. Here we go. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to escape the wrath of these Riders of Pinneth Gillen, though. Tawawari might be fast enough to outrun here. These Riders of Pinneth Gillen might be able to get a free trample on these, on these uh, pikes here. Or these archers. Yep. There it is. The early cav from uh, from Nid has proven to be pretty effective. The Starlit Lanterns must not have been enough to, to stop this assault. And the Riders of the Knife, um, with the Linhir Spearmen involved, are not going to be able to get the defense that they want done. Clansmen of Lamadon surrounding these Axe Elves. The, Car I feel like Carlibur is is kind of struggling to, to manage all these different things at once. Um, doesn't have the resources and... And, and tools that he needs in order to defend this here. Bit of a win. Um, no more spearmen for Gondor, so the Riders of the Knife going to be able to kind of trample these guys on repeat. We have 10 total power points for Gondor and 11, so pretty even in power points. Um, but in terms of map control... Well, I, I, as I say that, there's more white on the map, absolutely, but max CP is actually tied. We cannot hold this line. Idriel being purchased for um, for Carliber. She has her fluid strike. Idriel, I, I believe, re received a buff. She has uh, significantly more health than she did pr previously. The Starlit Lanterns purchased. Going to be able to stun these guys. Going to be able to get some good damage. I like that he's focusing down the Linhir Spearmen so that the Riders of the Knife here can come in for the Reinforce. Uh, he's probably going to want to back off so that the Riders of the Knife can take it from here. Um, we have Idriel. Idriel's somewhere. Other Riders of the Knife now at level 2, which is really good for him. Uh, Idriel's down here taking down some farms. Alright, so Lorien um, on the cusp of a bit of a comeback here. Doing what Lorien does... 
maintaining an even CP lead here. And Gondor must be investing in some other stuff. We have Baragond. I think Baragond, he's been adjusted a little bit too. I think he's a little bit cheaper. Um... His special abilities have been changed, not changed up a bit, but just like adjusted numbers wise. So we'll see how Baragon fares for him. Being able to pick off the cavalry is not a bad option for him here while uh, Carlebur leans on the Riders of the Ninth to kind of uh, clean up the fiefdom units. Um, the level two, we've got the Blessed Waters. You can see uh, it's now a well. I think, I can't tell if this one has the roots upgrade. But the ones on the edge, he's probably going to want to get roots upgrades for. Riders of Pinneth Gillen getting an absolutely massive trample. He doesn't have any pikes here. There's no Lorian pikes to defend here. So Carlibur is going to take an unnecessary loss. Um, these guys are one kill away from level two. Just a bit of a bit tough for him. We're going double barracks, double fiefdom spam. And beyond that, not much else. It's just Baragond and all that stuff. I think he gets a yeah, he gets a hero leadership later. But no no fiefdom leadership. There's no four long in the mix quite yet. From so um this lull in the action is exactly what Carlebur wants. He doesn't want to uh he doesn't want to be forced to defend all his trees. He wants to stack up some resources, get as many heroes as he can out. We see Haldir. I believe that's Haldir. Yep. Aldi are going to be trying to level up as quickly as possible against these clansmen of Lamedon. And we've got this recent, <coughs> recently constructed um, Malorn tree. Going to get the heal from the upgrade, as you can see. I need another drink of water. Down in the bottom. Baragond is going to try to come and help. But I think Idriel, if she uses her fluid strike for the knockback, um, I wonder if he cast that and, and, and wasn't quite able to get in range. But the, the fluid strike would have knocked Baragond over and helped the Lorian spears get right on top of him. Uh, but Baragon's a bit too fast. And Haldir is going to be picking off the rest of these clansmen of Lambadon with his bow. This is a bit, a bit of a scary spot to be on this map. I think the the Oathbreakers summon here. Alright, we see some heads clashing over here. So, we've got Linhir Spearmen. Um, need to be dealt with before the Riders of the Ninth can do anything. They don't want to purchase their bows. Because remember, the bow, uh, the bow purchase for Riders of the Ninth is permanent. Um, Haldir leveling up. Slowly but surely, he now has his teleport ability. Very, very powerful tool. You can go no further. Used to capture Baragond here. Um, fluid Strike was used. I missed that piece. I wonder if that was used in, in that fight at all. But Haldir leveling up quickly. Um, if he's able to get... Yeah, this is what he wants. He wants to fight these Riders of Pinneth Gill, and they're not going to be able to get on top of him. He's going to get some crazy XP for killing them. Um, it looks like... We actually see that um, Sworn Allegiance being used from Nid to increase the, the fiefdom production here uh, to to stem this defense because all of a sudden Lorien finds itself in, in a huge uh, warrior advantage here, lasting long enough to commit to this um, counterattack is pretty crazy. But with Sworn Allegiance being used at the right time, there's more than enough Gondor to to counter this well well played by both players here i really don't think he was expecting this but i don't I, he's gonna have to do something if he wants to get idriel out of here maybe haldir will yeah haldir is gonna teleport um idriel out of here so great use of uh march wardens of damn. in that whole engagement coming down here haldir hits level six so now at level six uh, his armor passive was, uh, I believe, nerfed down to 20%. Uh, but he gains an active ability to grant nearby allies 50% damage and 15% speed for 30 whole seconds. So the next engagement that um, Cartlebur takes, which I'm assuming he hopes is not for quite a while. We have a maxed out 500 size army for Gondor and not enough of an army left for uh Carlebur to deal with we have the waters of nimmerdell uh statue it's hard to find um but a recent change was that the waters of nimmerdell statue has we been limited to, to one uh in order to prevent too much rebuild cheesing but to compensate it was given um uh it, pro it provides more resources uh 
than it had previously to nearby Malorn trees. And we do see Galadriel coming out. I'd love to see this change because Celeborn has kind of been the favorite uh, Lothlorien hero, but um, Galadriel's cost was greatly reduced to down to 3,000 and her damage was increased. And she wants to get on top of these guys, though. Protect, protect this tree. Uh, it might not be enough. We've got to get... Uh, so the Waters of Nimberdell rebuild being used here. And Galadriel's going to try and get some good kills and level ups here. Haldir and Idriel. So Lorien is now kind of hitting its stride. It's getting its heroes out. It's able to use uh, heroes to really high potential here. It's it's funny to see um, a hero strategy playing out so well versus Gondor. <laughs> um, yeah, Galadriel slow to level up, but will eventually um, will eventually hit a pretty big power spike. Haldir and Idriel working together to take down some farms here while Gondor needs to figure out what it's up to. I don't see a blacksmith. As far as I can tell, I don't see a blacksmith for um, for Gondor. So all of these fiefdom units are going to be stuck with, um, you know, they need the armaments of... A lot of them... Oh, no, that's true. Sworn Allegiance gives the uh, armaments of the White City. Normally you have to be level 3 to acquire that. Um, but all of these fiefdom units that were produced during that time, um, now have these armor buffs. Really, really, uh, clever power usage here from Gondor that we normally don't see. The Gift of Galadriel summons a golden tree surrounded by elven mists. <clears throat> Very similar to the, um... I don't think that's a fight that these guys win. You can see Idriel's health buff uh, in effect here, though. At level 7, multiplicatively, she's a lot tankier than she used to be. Um, and Lorien using this opportunity, uh, baiting the heroes up on the top to try and get on top of this uh, well. And get a decent free trample on these clansmen of Lamadon. Too many spears in here to rush the Riders of the Ninth into, but if he can get... You can go no further, and with the flank... Look at this! Galadriel's gonna get the huge AoE... Oh my god. Lorien with an absolutely devastating pincer attack. Unbelievable. Aya Earendil coming down. An absolutely devastating. Nid calls GG. Unbelievable. Wow, guys. I am hyped up. That was crazy. Holy shit. It's it you I feel like in this game it's hard to find moments that are so decisive like that because siege, sieging down buildings and stuff in this game you, generally takes a long time but to go from almost 6 or 700 cp down to down to almost nothing in an absolutely well executed stun aoe uh trap there from Lothlorien amazing amazing play from Carliber there to take out game three and, and kind of bring him back into this match that was insane absolutely insane all right hold on let me update the score here i want to check and see what everybody's thinking about that because i mean i'm that was so cool <laughs> and my voice needs a little bit of a break too so let me get this updated we'll switch over to the whole screen in just a sec so it should be Nid 2, Carliber 1. <clears throat> all right yeah i'm giving the players a little three minute break i'm gonna grab some water as well <laughs> if you want to tell nid to pick a fun map feel free All right, be right back. I'm gonna mute myself really fast.
All right, we should be back. Everybody can hear me okay? <clears throat> yeah, that was an absolutely crazy end of a game there. All right, we have some bands from Carlebur. Bands. <clears throat> uh, the bands are so Nid banned Gondor and Erebor and Carlibur just banned Erebor and DG so we're definitely not going to get Erebor this time around <laughs> uh, but that does free up Rivendell Rivendell's been banned by both players Carlibur's running out of bands actually he's banned 8 factions so far so when it comes to if if we do go to a game five, he'll be stuck banning like Rohan, um, Isengard, I think. I do not have their picks yet, though. Ah, <laughs> excellent. <clears throat> Just waiting on Carla Burr's pick, and we'll get started here. I don't know if I said, but you guys are getting what you want. We are on, uh, we are on Ifa Ifa. Okay. Ooh, I like this. All right, let's get going. Somebody messaged me on Game Ranger for cheating. I don't know what the hell that's about. I'm not playing. <laughs> <clears throat> what were the bands in what game? I can go over the bands in a second while we get while I get this set up. Just give me a moment. I just want to get the lobby open for the players real quick. It's Ifa Iafa. I've never known. We always spell it wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll switch to the game and I'll check the. Um... It is a Mordor versus Rivendell game. And uh, Flame bans in the second and third game. So Nid banned Misty Mountains and Woodland Realm. And Carlibur banned Woodland Realm as well, and also Rivendell for the second game. 
And then for the third game, Nid banned Dalgaldur and Rivendell. And Carliver banned Mordor and Lorien. Alright, I'm not going to be able to see chat now though, so here we go. Alright, I'm extremely pleased to announce that we'll be moving into game four here. We've got Nidhogger up 2-1 in this tournament. And on a new 8.0 map, we've got one of our... I think this is one of our new favorite uh, 1v1 maps competitively is Ifa Yafa. And in the bottom right, it's Carliber with a uh, dramatic win in the last game. Very decisive play. He's here trying to pull off the reverse sweep. He needs to win this game or lose the tournament. Playing Rivendell. In the top left. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this new art, guys. Oh, God. I might still call it Slaughterhouses just by default, but do know that it is a slave arm now. <clears throat> But we do have, uh, I don't even know if I said his name. I was just distracted by the gorgeous uh, fortress here. We've got Nid playing Mordor. Going for three slave farms and a Mordor uh, orcish stronghold. Three orchards for Carliber and the Breedland Encampment. So this map features many um, goblin nests in the top right and bottom left areas of the map. So, a bit difficult to try and run too many uh, harassing units through here. And a bit time consuming to take down just by virtue of having so many goblins surrounding it. Nid is going for a pretty, as far as I can tell, standard start. He's got two orcish strongholds going for a fourth... Um, resource structure here and is just going to test the waters with a couple of orcish battalions going across the map while the bounders so these guys are going to sneak right past each other i don't think i don't think either of them could have possibly seen each other the way that that just worked out so uh, my mouse is kind of acting up here hopefully i don't miss too much stuff these bounders are going to run right into some other orcs i think i don't know who wins this fight archers ready for orders here we go, look at these guys. The Ungol trackers. They're the, uh, they act the same as the wraiths used to. But these guys are going to deny any sort of um, harass from these bounders. But that leaves that power unavailable for any kind of harass on this side of the map. So while the Tukish archers have now been purchased, uh, the orcs are going to try and get a decent enough, uh, you know, guard from that, but they're going to have to expose themselves to the fortress um, and not get anything done there. This battalion, however, Defenders is going to run shot. through uh, spotting the um, spotting the Dunedain outpost is a big win. And we actually already have a battalion of Dunedain Outriders out right now. Uh, Dunedain Outriders were included with a couple of other cavalry units recently uh, that got a speed nerf. So it's it's very slight, but I believe the Outriders, the Rivendell Knights, and the Cataphracts, the Easterling Cataphracts, so all of them in this matchup, potentially, um, received a small uh, speed nerf. Um... Still much faster than orcs, however, so going to be able to crumple these guys, no problem, and take advantage of uh, Mordor's work here in taking this goblin outpost. Mordor going to claim the reward from this one, as well as this one up here, being uh, reinforced by the pikes. The slave farm is going to fall to the... Uh, Hobbit cops here, the Bounders. <laughs> uh, getting flanked by the Orcs is not going to be great for them, though. I mean, if these Orcs don't attack, it'll probably be okay. Yeah, there was a little bit of hesitation from these Orcs, so Bounders going to actually get pretty decent value and hit level 2, get a little bit of a health and damage boost during this fight. Um, 
uh, Tangato Hyde might have actually made it so they could have taken him down, but the because the archers here just a, a tad bit too late. Together now. But Rivendell is going to be a much much scarier army at this point, and the the very quick uh, development into the Dunedain is very very effective here uh, against Mordor. It's going to be a while before um, Nid is going to be able to deal with the Dunedain outriders and the and the Rangers of the North, the Archers, anytime soon. Um, over here, we've got a bit of an orc attack. Decent clump on top of this orchard. Uh, Breland Townsguard and these Rangers of the North going to try and take them off, but I don't think it... I don't know if it's going to be enough. It'll be close. These guys are on... Yeah, they're going to have to reposition again, so the orchard is going to fall up here in the top. We've got uh, the Ungol trackers being summoned once again. Uh, right on top of these Dunedain and the Breland Townsguard. This is a pretty decent uh, flank of units here from um, from Nid. A little bit of a late Tangato hide. Already half of the Breland Townsguard are gone. Um, and I, I I think the Ungol trackers, do they deny? No, they don't deny it. They just It's just a counteractive thing. So um, Orcish Pikes and a Warrior Battalion going to try and jump on this orchard, but not not nearly enough numbers. And the Dunedain going to be able to prevent the thing here. Ooh, really nice trample as they come out of the barracks. Uh, really, really lucky for Carlaber there to get such a uh, great trample. Uh, and the Tangato Hyde, uh, you know, roided up Dunedain archers and took archers. Going to be able to camp this barracks. Um, Nid now does have the uh, his first Nazgul out on the map. And is going to be able to annihilate these guys. Wow. Nice. Almost level 3 already. If he can get one more trample, he can get Screech and be able to save the barracks. But he's going to he's gonna back off for now. And Rivendell's attack here uh, against Mordor is a bit... Um, it's a bit rocky. He's got the better units, but he has severely less numbers. And he's just so far away from home. And there aren't very many reinforcements along the way. So... If he's able to get this slave farm, that would be a pretty good win. Yeah, clumped up like this, he should be able to get a nice little attack on it. He gave the command to the archers, though, as well. So they're kind of stuck clumped up here. If the Nazgul... <laughs> oh, well, no, not... there's uh, there's pikes here. Never mind. Nazgul going to try and finish off the orchard. Did not get the XP, but there is a there's a lone builder here. Many, many orcs chasing off Rivendell's uh, army here. I think... Yeah, there are Orc Pikes in there. Eh, still, though. Was able to get a decent enough um, trample with the Dunedain Outriders. And the Nazgul just trying to check and see what's what's out here on the map. Just checking for extra farms or anything to be wary of. Carlaber finding these openings to get these tramples. Getting good value here. Trying to retreat. But now that the, uh, the Builder is going to fall... I don't think he has enough army to even bring into the heroic statue's presence, but Nid is going to leave it. Nid's going to leave the he's going to leave the heroic statue up instead of taking the opportunity to take it down. Um, he decided to uh, retreat a little bit, go up north. Uh, interesting choice. I mean, it's not at a. I would say this is this is at a pretty strategic location. So um, interesting choice to kind of leave it there. Uh, Carlaber says, don't mind if I do, and brings his units back up to this statue as a nice holding point. And let's see what we've got over here on Mordor's side. We've got, I believe, three Orcish strongholds, uh, the equivalent of the barracks, obviously. Many slave farms. Nid's doing a good job. He's 670, uh, 675 max. I believe I just heard some black rooks. Um, and only a level one troll cage, so no drummer trolls as yet. Uh, a bit of troll harass coming in, coming in right into the, into the fray here, but Strider is out. We will protect the small folk of Arian. Strider is out, and is going to be able to get some easy kills on these trolls. Between the Nazgul and these trolls, these Dunedain are not long here. Um, do we have a library? No library yet, so no uh, Gray Company. Um, there we go. Okay, got the troll. So a bit of a weird attack coming in from from Mordor here, trying to use the trolls to get some uh, 
some structural damage, but kind of aimed for the Breland Encampment, which is... I mean, it's only level 1, but... Uh, so no real damage done here from Mordor. Lost two trolls. I think killed the Battalion of Dunedain, though. Uh, if they didn't kill him, the Well is going to heal them up. So uh, kind of a pretty even trade. We've got more Outriders trying to harass this Slay Farm, and the Nazgul trying to hurry back to deal with this. It's the only unit he has to deal with this right now. Strider kind of running up forward... Uh, on a big clump of these guys. Tangato Hyde going to be really, really effective use here. The Nazgul is nowhere to be seen. This is the trade that Carliber wants. Where's Strider here? He's buffing the nearby Dunedain. Dunedain. Ooh. The Haradrim Raiders. Look at the new models. Looking amazing. Going to be able to disrupt this attack. Uh, Outriders not able to kill the farm by the time the Nazgul is able to deal with them. Um, Aragorn having to pop his heel. Uh, and not getting any experience for killing all these as they are summoned units. Uh, but we've got one of the twins out. At least one. I don't know if I see the other. So, uh, Rivendell finding himself in a pretty decent defensive spot here, but the Ungol Tracker is going to be summoned once again to try to debuff all these guys. And I think it's going to be it's going to be too much for Rivendell. There's too much Mordor here. Uh, we have Gorbag in the mix. I didn't even notice him, how small he is. Uh, but Gorbag has had some pretty recent uh, changes in 8.0. Um, his drop kick ability uh, knocks down nearby units and stuns heroes for five seconds. So I'm sure that was used on Aragorn. It was not enough to uh, kill him. But Gorbag, um, being a pretty cheap hero, has been a pretty uh, popular choice in the beta for um, the early game. So cool to see him out and about. But he also... No, that's not. Um, that's just one singular <laughs> Black Rook. I was wondering if that was Shagrat. Uh, Mordor just going to try and take... Uh, Nid putting a lot of emphasis on these uh, creep layers. Taking most of them. Dunedain Outriders getting a little bit of a trample here, but getting stuck behind these pikemen, not where they want to be. Uh, and Mordor with enough of the, the Black Uruk's uh, structural damage is more than enough to take down that uh, heroic statue. It's going to leave the, the lair open for another kind of steal from Rivendell. Going to be able to uh, poach off those resources. Uh, I should have noticed that the Sons of Elrond had even been purchased uh, earlier. I, I still don't... There is the library. Okay, great. And we are looking up the Lay of Lethan. I was hoping we would see that because I think especially against Mordor, these Grey Company are going to be absolutely monstrous uh, in dealing with, well, particularly the monsters and, and all that stuff. So uh, we will likely see the Grey Company soon as long as this another dis... Like, oh my... Threading the needle. Look at this. is going to be massive. No, Nid, don't hesitate. So Nid's hesitating a little, a little bit. Carlebury is catching wind of this attack. He's going to keep trying to harass this mill, and but he's going to be able to bring his heroes back. He's got both of the twins and Strider. Um, and these Outriders are going to look for a trample. Going to get on top of a few Black Uruk Marauders here. But this is a huge, huge clump. This, this orchard is absolutely dead. And now he's going to have to figure out what kind of attack he wants to run here. Strider's leveling up to level 3. Uh, Master Tracker not going to be uh, as much help here. We do have the Pikes upgraded, or the Dunedain upgraded into Pikes. Over here we have a bit of a skirmish. The Slave Farm did go down, but it's being uh, counterattacked. But I want to go back here. Tangato Hide being dropped as the Nazgul is trying to disrupt. Um, the fear not affecting the Dunedain. Um, I wish I could recall why. Oh, I think uh, Gorbag must have just fallen. The sound effect that just played there. The Twins plus Strider is gonna are going to be too much for Mordor to handle here. Okay, a nice flank here, able to catch the troll off guard and Dunedain Outriders. Again, these these players are really, really able to get their, their cavalry angles done really well, um, avoiding the spearmen in the mix. So what looked like a pretty decisive attack from, uh, from Mordor, reminiscent of game one, if you remember the, the Misty Mountains army coming in, uh, the difference being that this game... Strider and the twins were were there to meet them. Here they are. Swift Strikes. I think these were renamed. Some of these were renamed. Go 
Gwenny. Yeah. Very cool. So Carlaber again showing um a preference towards these uh you know uh cheaper heroes to kind of lead uh lead these defenses. And we'll see if he can pull off any kind of a a successful offense here too, because I mean he survived a pretty big attack, which is big success. But at this point, he's 150 army supply out of 550. Um, and Nid's current army size is bigger than what Rivendell could even possibly have currently. So um, with Easterling archers now in the mix, yeah, I didn't even notice. We've got the level 2 Haradrim uh, garrison, or sorry, Easterling garrison. No Haradrim here. Corbag a little bit exposed, but the oh, Dunardine Outrider is going to get a bit of a... Uh, going to get past these guys. <clears throat> Ned going to ignore that except for one battalion of pikes. Makes sense. What is going to be the answer to this? Are the great the gray company have not Are the gray company out? This is a huge attack and I I don't see I don't see what uh what Rivendell has here. Oh, he has Glorfindel. <gasps> Glorfindel is kind of far and away right now. Oh, I love to see Glorfindel. Chasing down this troll, having a hard time killing him. Yeah, this is a huge, huge army. And the Easterling archers are no joke. If the Easterling archers can get on top of these heroes and kind of wail away for free. That's a really good counter to what Carlaber is running here, which is this kind of hero-based defense. Um, with Eladon and Elro here's, you know, intrinsic... Uh, even, like, they're even stronger versus Mordor, considering the orcs. Oh, great, uh, great cavalry summon! Not enough pikes to, to, to prevent that. Uh, the Dunedain are going to survive. Um... And a very great, or not a very great wizard. Oh my god, so much is happening right now. So El, uh, Gandalf is going to be counterattacking here. So I, I'm lost for words. The cavalry here did not quite work because the Dunedain were able to survive because of the leadership. Uh, so in response, uh, we've got Gandalf the Grey summoned at the back of this army and absolutely obliterating the Easterling archers here, which was the prime worry. And now um, the sons of Elrond and Glorfindel and Gandalf all able to take on Shelob herself and, and defend this attack. What a crazy, crazy uh, defense here from Carlaber. Great, great play. Um, one battalion of Easterling archers surviving, but not for long. The, um, the sons of Elrond chasing them down along with Strider. And are going to be able to hop on top of this slave farm. So, um, really, really clever use of powers and uh, and just defensive capabilities from Rivendell, able to make a lot out of a little. And now, with the um, with a slight slight army advantage, as far as I can tell, I don't know Mordor is trying to is trying to remax here as quickly as they can. Uh, but this is a scary thing for them to deal with, and they finally do have the Great Company out on the map. So uh, it's quality over quantity here in the textbook definition of the of, of the word. We're losing a level three slave farm here for Mordor. Um, Easterling archers with the barbed arrows, though, going to be able to take down these Dunedain archers very quickly. And with the uh, orc archers in or orc pikes in formation, uh, Glorfindel, if he gets trapped movement wise, he's going to be picked off by these Easterling archers. Into the wild. Yeah, I think. I mean, it's up to Carliber, but he's going to have to figure out how he wants to deal with this. These Easterling archers with the barbed arrows are no joke. Some of the highest DPS in the game. This fellow ain't dead. Gorbag has, Gorbag has been uh, purchased on repeat here by, by Nid. We've got Glorfindel and other heroes on top of these slave farms. I'd like to see that as part of the retreat, but I don't know if he's going to be able to find a favorable enough position to deal with this archer clump. It's just too much, too much damage at range that even the Grey Company are being forced to retreat here. Glorfindel is, uh, you know, <laughs> off to sacrifice himself again. Um, okay. So, honestly, that was looking a little scary for Carliver, but I think he was able to retreat. He's got his level 5 units uh, survived. They're healing out of combat. They'll be back to the well soon. Um, I don't believe the Girdle of Imladris has been uh, purchased. It ha so, across the board... 
Uh, one change that we're, we're experimenting with right now is uh, the defensive upgrades um, from fortresses and some of the, you know, like the final, I can't really describe if there's like a word for them, but the girdle and ladris, like the ones that lead to the final upgrades for the fortress, there's been some price increases for those. Um, I don't know if we'll see Kyrdan. I was wondering if the uh, if the well had been uh, upgraded yet. But I'm assuming we'll lean in that direction eventually. No other library upgrades have been purchased. We don't see the Reverence of Yavanna. Uh, but we are saving up quite a bit of money here. So I we just spent 800 bucks on... What could you spend 800 bucks on? Oh, there it is. Reverence of Yavanna. Yeah, both players trying to figure out how they want to go into the late game here. I think this attack is a bit of a mistake from Rivendell. I think he wants more than this. Because we'll these barbed arrow Easterlings, there's four battalions of them as far as I can see. It's going to absolutely skewer them, especially... I mean, let's see what powers we have available to us. No powers available for Mordor, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe this is actually a pretty good time to go in. Because with the if you give if you give these archers any amount of time to pick their targets, uh, it's going to be really really tough on Rivendell to keep their high priority units alive. Um, a level two orchard being taken down here not uh, not a small loss by any means. Rivendell's economy has just received a huge boost though, with the reverence of Yavanna being purchased. That should pay for itself pretty soon. Um, a pretty big power point lead, it seems, in favor of Rivendell, though. Because Rivendell has an entire extra level uh, tier 1. And the same amount of extra. Uh, orc Spearmen up here, even though they're level 2 with the Mark of the Red Eye. Not going to be able to defend this orchard long enough against these Dunedain. And uh, Mordor now posturing with a huge, huge clumped army. And no AoE currently for uh, Rivendell to protect against this. We even see some siege in the mix here being boosted by. Uh, no, that's just the that's just the symbol. It looked like it. That was the um, uh, the Gothmog um, mark. But ooh, the fire damage on top of this level three orchard. He's gonna lose this. This is providing forty four a, a tick. And he's going to lose it in three hits. He's got to figure out how he's going to deal with this. Nate is going about this the right way. His la his last few attacks have been um, have been thwarted. Uh, so now he's going to take his time. He's going to chip away at Rivendell. Not commit too hard to an attack uh, until um, until there's not enough left for Carlaber to use against him. Carlaber's mind probably racing right now, trying to figure out what tools he has against this. Um, right now, the lightning strike would be pretty huge. Yeah, this is going to be a slow death for Rivendell unless he can come up with a, with a strategy here. He's losing all these buildings for free, not prepared for the catapults. He's got to poke in and see what's up. But he does not, he just doesn't have the, yeah, the Easterling archers even able to just destroy the calf. Two catapults now. Elrond's library gonna fall. I think these must be in aggressive stance. Yeah, they're doing so much damage. And that's it for the uh, for the library. Nid. Oh, oh my god! Wait. Oh, it did work. <laughs> I missed it though. <laughs> well, I I I don't take the. I'm not gonna take the fall for that one because I I predicted that. That's a prediction, not a, a totally missed camera moment. He got so much damage done with that. Unbelievable. Okay, so, uh, Carlaber back in this. Absolutely. Uh, kind of running forward a bit too far with Strider. The Easterling Archers are, are going to be able to, uh, are going to be able to get a ton of damage done in here. Tongato Hide being thrown down. Uh, we've got the Grey Company here, um, uh, debuffing everybody's armor and damage. Um, uh, throwing a heal. Uh, huge flank on the Easterling Archers here. Nice! Carlaber absolutely turning this engagement around. Nid not expecting to be on this side of the map. Uh, Blessing of Ulmo here for uh, for Rivendell. However, look at how close we are. 
getting stuck. This is not where Carliver wanted to be fighting. Uh, the uh, Legions of Morgul and the Morgul Pikemen summon. Um, gonna be able to thwart this Rivendell attack before he even gets to the Eye of Sauron. Alright, we've got the brothers running. We had uh, the level 6 fire shall be woken from Aragorn here, but... The next, the next engagement that we see, Mordor is going to have uh, a pretty big um, ability available to them. We have max CP, max maximum max CP for Nid, and only an army size of 400 so, or so for Rivendell, uh, with fewer tricks up their sleeve. We've got the lightning strike and, and eagle and all that uh, uh, stuff on cooldown, and because he used the lightning strike, he does not have Kyrdon just yet. Okay, we see this. Uh, we see this fight happening in the center here. Uh, Easterling archers right on top of uh, Elro here or Eladon. Uh, Cav summon on top of these guys, along with the burn from Eye of Sauron, which is recently buffed. Eye of Sauron now doing damage over time instead of stunning. Ooh, I don't know how Carlyber is going to be able to handle this. He does have Gandalf uh, on his side here, and Aragorn was able to survive. He's going to have to wait out the Eye of Sauron. The Eye of Sauron is absolutely devastating here. Do we have... Where is the... Now, he went for two 15s instead of going for Flood or Tom Bombadil. Yep, losing that Orchard again. He's trying to run around with Glorfindel and, and some Rivendell Knights in the back. But the, the Grey Company getting burned by the Eye of Sauron here, actually. This flank, uh, maybe gonna... No, there's there's too many, um... Ooh, good pick on the Easterling Archers here, but I don't know if it's gonna kill them. Uh, he's gonna keep going for the trample. Alright, so the Rivendell Knights plus Glorfindel finding a pretty decent, uh... Finding pretty decent picks here. Picks here. Uh, able to kind of disrupt the reinforcement chain. But now, uh, Nid jumping right on top of this fortress. Uh, Gandalf being summoned. We've got Gandalf summoned. Shelob to counter. G Gandalf's gonna throw down you shall not pass <laughs> huge stun uh, we've got the gray company uh, almost fully replenished Tankado hide missing the gray company unfortunately here but um this stun here in the Gandalf AoE is absolutely massive as the uh, the elven Makari are out Rivendell Knight's gonna try and get another uh, clump out on here I mean this is as good as Carla Burke could hope for it's not working perfectly I, I heard me saying something yeah there we go Glorfindel, um, he's only at half health, saying I'm beginning to fade. You're fine. Uh, we've got the lightning sword from Gandalf here. Really, really good use. There's not enough damage to DPS him down, so he's going to get the full value of this ability. Able to get some archers out of the way there. Uh, is he going to be able to get the cart out before he dies? The cart's usually pretty helpful. Alright, well, Gandalf did what he needed to do. He disrupted that first, uh, that first clump. Uh, but Shelob is still going to be a pain in the ass here, and I don't... Uh, there has to have been... I mean, Strider is still alive, he's full health, but I don't see the brothers. Elra here is, uh, is dead. And there we go, Eladon is, is healed. So this is a manageable... This is manageable for Rivendell to deal with, but the... Ooh, uh, Glorfindel kind of in the center here, trying to take down this catapult. Best he can. I cannot hold them much longer. Uh, but he's taking a lot of damage from the Easterling Archers here. Alright, Glorfindel is able to get out with Norolim. Or no, he cast uh, Revealed in Wrath. Which is just a damage boost, so... That could have been really bad for him if he got stuck there in the cast mode, but... Um, wasn't able to survive. Uh, the Grey Company? Um, kind of proving to be the MVPs here. So tanky. And more Rivendell Knights getting on top of these Easterling Archers. Alright, I want to check and see. We've got... Uh, Slaves of Nurn was purchased from Mordor. Because Mordor must have been getting crazy power point income uh, recently. Uh, so they spent it on Slaves of Nurn here. Uh, but the Rivendell Knights getting a little bit too aggressive here. Then Grey Company getting caught as well. That's a lot of Easterling Archers firing at these guys. He cannot lose the Grey Company here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Huge, huge win from Nid. Oh no, and now Strider's gonna die too. Okay, nope, nope. He's able to he's able to micro them well enough. And actually the battalion of knights gets out. That's a huge, huge win. Much, much money uh, invested in those. 
Uh, we've got the new armor armory art as well. Looks so good. All right, Glorfindel, level four. Uh, Battalion of Rivendell Knights still alive, level two. Gonna replenish. Strider walked out of this alive somehow. Still has King's Foil available. Used to, um, or yeah, Drop King's Foil at the loss. Two trolls, Gothmog, level six. More catapults, more legions of Morgul. I think this art is different from uh, the current seven point uh, whatever release as well. It looks so scary. Awesome stuff. Uh, we've got some Rivendell Knights providing some harassment over here. And Glorfindel as well. Trying to get some distractions going here. But I, 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 I think he needs this Cav for this engagement. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I want to see... So we've got some ranged Siege Ballista. And we actually have the Eagle and Lightning um, available here. I don't see Kyrdan, however. Uh, depending on his current economy... Yeah, he doesn't have a ton of money. If he had a ton of money, I would say he wants Kyrdan so that he can get the uh, the call of Belagire to summon the summon some units. But as far as I can tell, there's no upgrades available for Rivendell. Um, he's been too busy having to remax and and deal with his uh, deal with these. Um, oh, we don't have magic arrows either. Oh, one more catapult shot could have uh, killed this thing. I'm sure it'll come back for round two. Um, Glorfindel getting caught by some Morgul Spearmen, not getting the level three farm kill. There might have been a slave mill kill up here. Did I hear Elrond? No, it was just a unit calling for... Oh my god! An amazing lightning strike on top of these archers and two trolls. The catapult is not going to fall. Alright, great trample here from the Rivendell Knights. So we see another... Um, Really good defensive play coming from uh, Carliber once again. Uh, a very similar <laughs> strategy here, summoning the uh, summoning these cavalry here, but with a really quickly placed Tangato hide. The archers are going to be able to survive the first couple of uh, tramples, and the Grey Company switch to their pikes. So really, really clever play here from Rivendell. Um, as once again Mordor's attack is thwarted, and we do we are going to see come Mary Doll. Instead of uh, flood, I, I, this is very interesting to me. I, I think this is the right choice. I re I really think that um, Carlaber needs to take advantage of the. He needs to manage the battlefield before he can manage the the siege of Mordor's base here. Um, so he's gonna go for come Merry Doll, which will be available to him uh, pretty soon. We've got Glorfindel leveling up to level five already. It's really cool to see him, and he was gotten so early. We might actually get to Slayer of Demons. Um, this game, which would be really fun to see. The Roquentari running around. Um, I don't know. It's really tough uh, on Ifa Yafa. This is a really hard uh, choke point to hold. But uh, Tom Bombadil, Tom Bombadil, gonna put some units to sleep. I don't know. It's just a couple of orc battalions, so. I mean, taking down the level 3 Haradrim garrison is a very worthwhile endeavor, though. That's going to... The Easterling archers are going to have to start absolutely from scratch. Um, I don't know if he'll have to repurchase the barbed arrows or if just getting to the right tier um, version of a new reconstructed building is going to be good enough. But he's actually getting some pretty decent damage done to some of this production here. Um... With Tom Bombadil kind of running around and doing massive structural damage, too. Look at Tom Bombadil go. Alright, we've got the Witch King here. And Nid is actually going to call GG. I didn't see the Witch King earlier. Look at those effects, though. The chill of Angmar. I just don't want the, uh, the match to end before we witness this. This is what we always wanted, right? Tom Bombadil to just kind of stride into Mordor and kill the Witch King and do all that stuff. I think Nid is trying to find what other building he needs to destroy in order to uh, <laughs> end the game here. There we go. There it is. GG's. We are going to get a game five, everybody. This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. <sighs> All right. Save this replay too. Oh, wrong one.
Good stuff. All right, I got to update the score really quick. <clears throat> yeah, I think Tom Tom Bombadil was a crazy choice there, but really it was the um uh I think Carlibur just took advantage of the uh of the lightning strike from the fortress. Nid was very, very clumped when he was sieging down uh Rivendell's base, and those lightning strikes killed like Three battalions of Easterling archers. The second one killed like two trolls. Um, a bit too much clumping near Carlibur's base, I think, against that power was was really what killed him. Because those sieges should have been deadly. Um, but Carlibur, using the spells to his advantage, and, um, was able to turn it around. Really awesome stuff. Okay. Um, Alright, your map pick again, Nid. <clears throat> I also think that the correct me if I'm wrong team but I'm pretty sure the lightning strike the cooldowns on the lightning strike from the fortress were were nerfed I think like it shares a cooldown with all of them it's a lot longer now and it's even more expensive to buy that upgrade in the first place. So the fact that he was able to afford that and manage all that was pretty was pretty cool. I could be I could be wrong on those changes though. Uh, I'm waiting for a map and bands from everybody. All right, I will be right back. All right, we're still getting uh, picks and bands from everybody. <clears throat> I'm looking at the chat. I didn't realize this was such a controversial game. <laughs> it looked pretty good to me. <clears throat> All 
I thought we got some cool stuff. It was cool to see Glorfindel instead of Elrond. It was cool to see... There was lots of cool stuff from this last match. In my opinion. <clears throat> all right what do you think we're gonna see in this next game guys it's the last one game five we're gonna be playing on a, on a on a classic one playing on glades Just waiting on Nid's pick here. <clears throat> the bands, I'll tell you what the bands were. Uh, Carliber banned Rohan. It's the only one that he can ban left. I think he could have banned Aizen, but Nid already played Aizen, so. Uh, and then uh, Nid banned Aizen and Mordor. Okay. I've got both picks. <clears throat> All right, guys, we have an Erebor versus Rivendell final. I think that leaves, I think that's most factions played. We didn't see any Dolgaldor. We didn't see any Woodland Realm. But I think we got everything else. Could be wrong, though.
Here we go. I'm going into it, folks. Final game in a best of five. I love the fifth match of a best of five. This will be really fun. Airbor versus Rivendell. I'll introduce the players in a second. If Carla Burr can pull this off, the returning champion, he'll have reverse swept Nid after a 2 0 lead to come out 3 2, which would be pretty crazy. Really fun to see. But Nid has been playing, playing pretty solid this entire tournament, so I, I honestly I don't know who it's going to go to this time around. In the bottom left, Carlibur playing Airbor. We'll find out what rain he's going to choose in just a bit. And in the top right of Glades of Athelion, we see Rivendell being played by Nid. Rivendell proved to have quite a few tricks up their sleeve, especially against an evil faction like Mordor with the Sons of Elrond and um, some pretty good AoE spells between Gandalf and the Lightning. So we'll see if Nid goes for something similar or goes for a different tactic altogether. We've got a builder running around the map here for Carlibur. Taking some risks here. Going to throw down... Uh, a mine right in front of uh, Rivendell's base here, just out of vision. Nid is expanding off to the left here. Got the Hall of Warriors facing in, got the tunnel facing in. Interesting choice. Guardians going to be thrown into the mine here and we'll see how much damage they're able to get done as of right now the bounders are just now being purchased so i would be surprised if this orchard lives i think it'd be really hard for rivendell to stop this attack from killing one of the farms because we are going to see the dunedine gathering thrown down immediately similar to last game both players kind of opting in for the cav rush i assume as soon as there's enough money in the bank to pop these outriders. That's what's going to be purchased. He was unfortunately stalled by three resources there for uh, at least a tick's length <laughs> worth of time, but he's able to purchase them. It is a long, um, it is a long purchase time, but I don't know if the with the guardian's speed if they're going to be able to get enough um, cover enough ground in order to get a second orchard as well by the time the cab is out maybe they will yeah nid's gonna destroy it this gambit working very very well for carlibur so far these bounders going to finish off the mine or carlibur destroyed it couldn't quite tell but with two uh with two orchards destroyed already leaving nid to purchase uh purchase another orchard pretty far off in the distance and already foreseeing the Dunedain Outrider rush, the uh, Dwarvish Pikemen here. Going to be able to protect these guys. The Horn of Erebor being put on top of them. I think that should give them quite a bit of armor to be able to hold, hold off on here. But, I mean, we'll see. Two more. Another battalion of Turkish archers against these slow-moving dwarves. He is focusing on the pikes, obviously, so make sure that the um, when the Dunedain Outriders do come back, they'll be able to deal with the Guardians, no problem. And actually, the Bounders survived to level 2, so he's actually going to get pretty good value there. Uh, Carlibur doubling down on the forward mines. He's built one a little bit further south than where his original one was. He wants to keep the pressure up. Um, I didn't even check to see what um, rain we're in. It doesn't quite matter just yet. Maybe there's an easier way to check. I don't see a builder that's free. They're all building stuff. There we go. Yeah, we're on Reign of Oak and Shield. All right. Dunedine Outriders. While I was, you know, scrambling to figure out what rain we were, I missed the kill on the Guardians here. Right, Classic lads, casting blunders. There's trouble brewing. Uh, but this is going to be an easy kill on here. There's not even any pikemen in here, and they're on the perfect side of the... Okay. Yeah, I think this it was interesting to try and rebuild this here after this one had been killed so quickly. Um, he wasn't going to be able to counterattack now that the archers and the cavalry are out. So, 
Carlibur getting good value in the beginning. Uh, able to comfortably creep this Warglare and, and get level 2 for his pikes. And sporting an even max CP with Nid currently. Um, Rivendell, though, uh, a much higher army. So I want to see what uh, Carlibur is spending his money on. More creeping going on. We should have an assembly out, and we are pur we are purchasing uh, an Ibsenab Azgahaka. Uh, nope, Azgahaka, otherwise known as the Battle Wagon. <laughs> um, Pikes out here to defend. Um, going to get kind of stuck between the rocks a little bit awkwardly here, but the Do Not Die Outrider is going to retreat nonetheless. Breland Town Guard uh, up here to creep this war glare. Uh, to join in in the creeping game, get a few power points, get a few dollars. We are basically even in power points currently, though there's a large um, uh, Breland and Shire presence in the center of the map here. Um, trying to figure out how they want to deal with this battle wagon. There's uh, enough Towns Guard in here to protect them as long as the positioning is right. He's got another battalion here. Um... But Erebor with the Guardians is going to get a pretty decent flank on here. And and if if Carlebar can find the right angle to get these uh, get this battle wagon in the mix on top of these Tukish archers, he'll be in a good spot. Dunedain Outriders, uh, I believe that's Tangato Hyde. Yeah. Going to get one of the starting tunnels. Um, and survive to tell the tale. He's not level 2, so he'll need a, 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 a well if he wants to heal those guys. Um, ooh, wow. Just barely missing the hitbox of the Breland Towns Guard here. Um, the Builder going to try and get out of dodge here. The Battle Wagon... Uh, he's, maybe he's going to try and cut off these Outriders? Halbarad of the Dunedain reporting for duty. Or no, these are the same team. Jeez. I was looking at these pikes. He's not going to be able to cut them off. He's just going to chase after them. And, ooh! No, a little bit of a mismanagement there from Nid. Uh... Erebor posturing up in the center here, building a forward, uh, getting a forward builder up here. I don't know if that was a drag box decision or if he's actually trying to put down a, yeah, here we go. He is trying to put a mine kind of forward here. And the Breland Towns Guard not going to be able to finish off the kill, which means that this uh, battle wagon feels a little bit safer. We've got a hero already. Halbarad. Look at this guy. An erring loyalty. Uh, not much use yet. We do not have... Um, Aragorn, or any Dunedain, as far as that's concerned. The only Dunedain that have been purchased so far, other than the ones in production, um, have been the cavalry. So, um, Halbarad going to try and pick off some units from far away. We also see Feely. Going to try and jump in the fray here. Uh, uh, pretty good flank here, prompting a bit of a retreat from the Breland Towns Guard here. So, well played by both. Just playing this game of chicken with the cavalry as normal. Uh, Feely getting some pretty easy levels on top of this, these bounders. Uh, bounders on top of this mine. Not quite attacking yet, but uh, a big archer clump here unanswered. Uh, Horn of Erebor uh, being played in Tangato Hide. Not available. Getting the flames down on top of the Dunedain though. Ooh, huge battle wagon value. Able to find thread this needle where there's no pikes. Um, the battle wagon is going uh, is gonna to pay for its crimes. It's war crimes. Um... But nonetheless, a good engagement here from Erebor. This is what Erebor wanted. Uh, Nid had a pretty good position uh, up until that that point. Uh, Feely, though, able to get to level 3, able to get the Hidden Blade. Um, getting the, the crippling single target damage done. Up in the top, we've got some uh, level 3 Breland Towns Guard coming after this mine. Pretty decent stuff. And Cave-In actually was purchased. A perfect Cave-In. Feely going to be able to get right on top of these pikes, get some more experience. Halbarad kind of having to play this awkward game of cat and mouse around the mine. But now the sword Dunedain are... Yeah, they're going to retreat. Um, So obviously the dwarven units are relatively strong, but are not going to be able to chase down pretty much anything that Rivendell has. Uh, Halbarad switching to his spear to skewer this uh, mine. Good stuff. So this kind of distraction in the middle, even though it seemed like um, it seemed like Erebor was doing a good job pushing this back, we have Rivendell kind of around the flanks, making good use of pretty cheap units, um, tricking a battle wagon into just suiciding itself. 
horribly unfortunate uh, loss there for Carliber. A bit of mismanagement there. It hurts to have to purchase this one again. Uh, we've got 2k resources in the bank for Rivendell. If I search back, is it going to be that much still? Looks like it. He just spent a thousand. Spent a lot of money just now. Trying to see what that could have been. Doesn't seem to be units. Oh, he just bought both the twins. Yep. 2,000 bucks spent right away. Caught it just in time. He's got the power and everything. So the brother's coming out. Going for a similar uh, situation here. Tongato Hyde being thrown down for, for Rivendell here. But more than enough clumping on the orchard here to kill. Uh, and now these archer uh, Dunedain kind of caught in the center. Gonna Okay, so now the hobbits are able to kind of creep up and be a little bit more of a meat shield for the Dunedain. Um, Feely's gonna have to retreat, not gonna be able to provide much, uh, help here. And uh, quite a few, uh, dwarves going down in this battle. Um, really, really good value here from Rivendell. Um, I think we're gonna see... Yeah, this is a bit of a PowerPoint lead. If we've got, uh, 15 plus 3, it's 18, and we've only got, uh, uh 16. Bit of a PowerPoint lead for, uh, Rivendell, but nothing too crazy. Um... Battle wagon, not going to be much use in this engagement here. And Rivendell's posturing is getting really, really scary. He's got a huge army up in the middle, and there's really nothing that Carliber has to answer for it. I'm surprised that we're not seeing any Manish units or anything from the assembly at all. The uh, Arid Luin Rangers have a really good splash attack uh, versus archers. Um, it might have been really good for him to get on top of these Dunedain that are causing him so much problems. But a good trample and a good, uh, fire barrel from the, from the battle wagon. Gonna be able to skirt the edge of the Dunedains with spears here. Dunedains. Plebeian. Pluralization here. Um, Feely hitting level 5. Dwarven Dexterity. Um, gains damage, attack, and movement speed. Got his brother here for good measure as well, Keely. Yeah, Rivendell's posturing on the map is too, too strong. And I don't I don't think Erebor has the right composition to deal with it. He's just too slow. Um, saw an upgrade here. We've got uh, Roach being upgraded. A Cav Summon, uh, not going to hurt. Getting free level 2 for everybody. So we get natural sprinters as well. I don't Without, um, without a Forge or uh, too many long extended trades, we haven't seen too much of natural sprinters giving the, the boost. Uh, the, oh man, another battle wagon lost. I think his his inv investment into these battle wagons is not... But yeah, there it is. He's going to call GG right there. And that's it. That's it. That's our grand finals match. A bit of a, um, a, bit of a chess match in that last one. Not quite, um, not quite high in drama. <laughs> but um, really, really well executed there from Nid to... Um, to deal with the to deal with the battle wagons and just get as much value out of his units as possible. Let me save this one here. And that's it. We have crowned our new Mr. Bones champion or whatever the the name is going to be. Uh, let me see. I'll just Did Hogger wins. Sorry, guys. I'll join chat in just a second. Just doing some last minute cleaning up here. Save this sheet finally. There it is. All right, folks. Great, great tournament. Really fun to see this. And I'm glad we got to... Uh, I'm really glad we got to a game five. I'm just checking the chat right now as I get out of the game here. GG's. All right. Um, that's the end of our tournament, guys. I mean, feel free to hang out, chat it up. We can chat it up in the Discord. Um, 
But what a great tournament. Thanks to Komogon and, and Nid, of course, for organizing. Congratulations to Nid for winning. Congratulations to Carliber uh, for some amazing games. I'm really like the performance of both of these guys is absolutely crazy. And Carliber able to take those uh, two games from a 2 0 loss was really, really exciting. Um, uh, just really, really well crafted play. Lots of cool planning from both care uh, from both uh, players as well. Just really, really awesome stuff. Uh, gonna end the stream here. Thanks for joining in. All right, bye everybody.